Nick Batterham from uh, the Bell Streets. Welcome to Australian Musician. Ah, oh, thank you. Nice to be here. So, Nick, what's your isolation story? Whereabouts are you? Are you alone? Are you with people? Uh, no, I'm, yeah, currently I'm sitting in my studio, which I'm fortunate that that's, I live upstairs. Um, so I'm isolated in, uh, you know, my own uh, sanctuary in a way. So I'm aware how lucky I am uh, to have that, you know, to have all my instruments and things to do that it's actually, not to say not disruptive to my life, but compared to many people, I think uh, it's less disruptive than it has been for other people. Yeah. Um, so what were the Bell Street plans that you had to put aside uh, because of this? Uh, well, I guess the main thing that um, went out the window was playing live, um, which would have been round about right now that our launch shows were going to be. And that's a bummer to not be able to um, launch the record in that way. And after the little rehearsal that we had, it was, you yeah, know, it was going to be fun uh, to do, and it's difficult to put out a record without doing shows because um, that's sort of a cornerstone of actually having something to promote, um, given how saturated the world is with records. Um, but it's not to say that won't happen. Um, I think, again, feel pretty fortunate that with things like that, they can be rescheduled. Um, I know in the arts sector there's lots of people whose uh, jobs instantaneously finishing aren't going to get to pick up where they left off or they won't pick up the shows that they missed and that's uh you know that's a real hardship mm. um the bell streets is primarily you and josh meadows uh tell me how the band formed uh well josh and i have known each other for a very long time since uh, blah, 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 blah. um it's yeah i guess in the 90s our bands were on the same label uh summershine records and I was a big fan of Josh um, and the Sugar Gliders uh, in particular, which is the early 90s. The first seven-inch single I ever bought was a Sugar Gliders uh, record. And we'd always played shows together and we'd been toured together at one stage. So there was just this open threat that uh, one day we'll, we should do something together um, and a, a lot of one days had passed before that actually ended up happening and I think in a bit of a lull of other projects it just, yeah, I can't even remember what the the motivation was that mm -hmm. said, well, let's actually do it. I remember inviting him over here to say, let's just get on with it and let's have a go and see what happens and um, thankfully from very quickly in the process it was obviously going to be very enjoyable and we were, yeah, positively encouraged. Yeah. Did, did you have a sound in mind for the band or is this just a, a sum of the parts? Um, well, I think with here and I, there's a lot in common of um, the music that we like and the things, the music that we've made ourselves uh, is not dissimilar. There are elements in there that we really are barking up the same tree. Um to simplify it, I think there's elements of my background that's more rock and noisy. Um, but at, I think when it came to writing together, there's this great freedom in that, that you're not defined by who you are individually so much. I know as a solo singer-songwriter, you sort of feel the burden of what is your house style uh, and cut ideas down very quickly for not meeting that or that's too happy. And uh, with an openness of working with someone else, that really unlocks a whole lot of things that uh, aren't strange. They're all part of, you know, what you can do as a writer. But it just, I think for both of us, allowed us to make music that we might not have otherwise made. That said, I don't think it's a huge departure from either of our styles. <laughs> Um, and you can hear elements in there, which for us, you can tell quite clearly where something's come from. Sure. Uh, um, but there's a tempering of each other's, you know, pointier bits uh, and an encouragement of, you know, some of the parts of ourselves that would otherwise be neglected. Yeah, so you have got a new album out. Uh, it's called Monument. Uh, why is that the title track? Um, well, I came from the name of one of the songs um, and 
I know Josh has said it, we struggled to find a band name for ourselves and our name is just as bad. And for two creative dudes who've been doing this forever that can come up with songs and pretty things, how, how difficult is it to choose a name? Um, but, yeah, the, the song Monument uh, sort of struck a middle ground of the record and I guess the, not ambiguity, but the multiplicity of meanings for a name like that um as with the song it's open to interpretation but for us having made something you know there's something of a monument a testament a record of this moment in time for us um so it just seemed inclusive of a whole lot of ideas yeah um you've both written with or collaborated with uh, many other musicians uh, how does it work with you and Josh? Uh, does it work differently than you have with other people? Yeah, it's. I don't think either of us have worked with a whole lot of people. I know Josh mostly has written with his brother, Joel, in both the Sugar Brothers and the Steinbecks. And for me, my main co-writing was back in the 90s with the Earthmen and Blindside. Um, and a little bit of one-on-one -on -one stuff here in the studio and working with people on their things. But to actually do that fully vulnerable thing of being one-on-one -on -one with someone and a blank page and just coming up with something from scratch uh, where you sort of have to show yourself emotionally, I hadn't done that in a really long time. Uh, and as a process, I mean... And now I want to do it again. <laughs> it's uh, it's enormously rewarding thing to get to do, um, and it's yeah. There's a clumsiness about it that's also really appealing. That um, it's the growth of a friendship at the same time. That's the best thing out of all of it. Um, yeah, I'm lucky. Is there a, a track on the album that you're particularly proud of? The way it turned out. Um. Well, it's a really hard question. Um, I like different songs in different ways. Mm. Um, certainly different reasons for things standing out to me. Um, the track that I most sort of connect with emotionally or can listen to and still get a little uh, feeling from uh, is a song called Crying Inside. Um, that, that sounds pretty miserable, but it's it's quite a jangly, twangy-sounding song. But I just find it really uplifting in that, you know, sad way that something melancholy can make you feel really good. Uh, but there's lots of moments where there's lyrical things that Josh has done that just elevate the song to, yeah, a level that I couldn't imagine and I still can listen to it and feel excited about that, which doesn't happen with every record you make. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me about the guitars uh, that were used on the album and, and what they contributed tonally, why, why you chose those those instruments. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, I sort of have a, a bit of an embarrassment of riches with guitars and... Um, being afflicted with that sickness of guitar collecting. Uh, and what guitar is right, you know? Yeah. Well, I've just done that lead break 20 times. Maybe we should try it on this one. Uh, but that's sort of part of what keeps it fun to do, I think, for me. Uh, but there's a lot of jangly sounds, lighter, cleaner guitar sounds, particularly with the rhythms uh, that the songs were written around. And they're very Fender kind of sounds. Um, there was a lot of the Stratocaster and a lot of um, a lot of the lead breaky sounds uh, on a Mustang um, through a little Vox amp, like an AC4 that just craps itself at a low volume, and you don't need any pedals. You just plug in and try and ride the wildness of it, you know. Yeah. Um, and how did you mic up the amps? Did you sort of play around with that a bit? A little bit. Um, I mean, there is a tendency to just go with what you know and what you know works. Um, around the time of doing the record, I got a pair of Royer mics, not the well-known one-to-one, -one, but the R10, 
which is sort of the, the cheaper brother. Um, and they're absolutely fabulous. It's sort of the first time really with single miking an amp that it feels to me like that's the sound that the amp sounds like to your ear in the room. Mm. Um, but I've always been a 57 next to a big condenser like an 87 and that being the blend of those would make a proper guitar sound. And that's a pretty traditional, you know, conventional approach. But with the Royers, I tend to use more amps and have a couple of amps going and have them each mic'd up and, yeah, over, overkill. Yeah. Um, and when you're done, do you, uh, as well as playing back through the monitors, are you one of the, the guys that likes to stick the, uh, the tape in the car as well? Yeah, I just, um, my old car that recently got uh, bought back by Honda for having a faulty airbag oh, okay. uh, was a late 90s uh, car with a 10-stack CD player and right. um, that would be a jumble of burnt CDs that someone played and some wouldn't. But Josh and I, when we would be writing, um, each time we got together, we'd try and write a song from scratch and by the end of the night, um, we would have, you know, got a bed down, a rough thing. There might be some lyrics missing, but there'd be something listenable, and that was always the aim to take away something. And we'd put the burnt CD in said Honda, and I'd drive him to the station because he was in Castle Maine, and we'd get, you know, the last train um, back to the country. And sort of this joyous thing of listening to our new creation, uh, or hopefully in the times that we put the CD in, it wouldn't queue up. It's just. Ah, devastating. <laughs> uh, are you one of those guys who knows when an album is done or, uh, or is it hard to let it go? Um, I think it's always hard to let it go in that sense of, um, yeah, when is anything finished uh, or revisions and rounds of mixing even when you stop writing. Um, but I think we got to a point where we knew there were enough songs and that could be an album, and then did the finishing stuff on it all as an album as a whole. Uh, because, as I described, that way of writing where we'd do a song a day, or each time we got together to do a song, there was lots of things that were almost finished that needed this final phase where everything was done together. And that was a really good way of doing it, to actually have a concerted time that was finishing an album but for me with the things writing for myself it's it's sort of endless like it's a con it's a continual thing that goes on and at some point that represents a period of time where you can cut it off and go those 12 songs that's an album um but uh, there's no right or wrong way with that i think it's something feels right it represents a thing so it is a record yeah. Is uh, the Bell Streets now your main project? Uh, is this a project that you'd like to continue to do for a while? Uh, well, it's definitely a project we'd like to continue. I think uh, Josh and I both have other things that we do. Um, we'd certainly like to get to do shows um, and you know have the live band version of it. And I'm sure once we've done that and experienced how much fun that is, <laughs> We will want to do that some more. And we were, I mean, we both really enjoyed making this record and want to do it again. Um, but there's a little bit like, well, let's just see, you know, if it's just a hobbyish thing and no one's interested, then maybe not. But I think it's been so enjoyable that it's inevitable that we would do some more of it. Um, but I'm always juggling a bunch of projects and my own uh, singer-songwritery stuff can go in the background for quite a long time while other things are happening and um, I get sick of it and then I you know, miss it and I'm sure there'll be another record like that but um, yeah, a few other projects will be happening next before another Bell Streets record. Yeah. Are you in a position to uh, write with Josh? at the moment if you wanted to? Um... Yeah, I, I guess we could. Um, and with a couple of other relationships with people, there's that, that are in a writing phase. Um, it's, it's difficult mm. because 
the way Josh and I wrote was face to face, and at least for the first, uh, well, for most of that process, we didn't bring anything to that. Um, it was really a, a blank page. Uh, later on, we'd have you know the germ of an idea or a lyric or something. Uh, or an unfinished song, but at first it was from scratch, and that, you know, eye, eye contact thing. Um, I admit I just haven't tried that um, with Skype or Zoom or whatever. Um, kind of waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to be in a room with uh, you know musical friends, and my best friends do come from a life of doing music, and it's a big thing to be without that. Um, the immediacy of having that reflected back at you by playing an instrument with someone else. Um, yeah. We're yeah, missing that a lot. Yeah. Uh, so if people want to buy the album or find out more about The Bell Streets, uh, which website should they go to? Uh, probably our Bandcamp, which is thebellstreets.bandcamp.com. Um, it's the best place for all the social media things. There's a Bell Streets or The Bell Streets somewhere. Right, Nick, thanks for your time. Thank you. Cheers.